Alright, this is going to be my comparison video of two legendary shotguns. The one on the top is a Remington 870 and the one on the bottom is a Mossberg 500. I know there's a lot of reviews out there on these two shotguns, but there's not a lot of videos out there that actually compare these two side by side. So I want to go ahead and uh, talk about some of the pros and cons and uh, some of the strengths and weaknesses and some of the things that I like and dislike about both of these shotguns. Now keep in mind I'm no shotgun expert. Uh, I'm just going to talk about my own personal preferences and my own personal opinions about these shotguns. And uh, hopefully they make sense and uh, maybe some of you guys agree and some of you guys don't. Now the one on the top is the Remington 870 and more specifically the one that I have is a uh, Remington Wingmaster which is what's kind of known to be the Cadillac of 870 models. There are all kinds of other models out there like the Express, the uh, Marine, the Mark I, the MCS which stands for Modular Combat Shotgun, the Police, the Super Magnum and so on and so forth. There's all kinds of different variants of the, the uh, 870. But the one that I have is a Wingmaster and this one was made in about 1975. The Remington 870 has been around since 1951 and one of its big claim to fame is that they've sold over 10 million of these shotguns since 1951. So they know what they're doing, they've got a lot of experience and there's a lot of uh, field testing that's already been done. Combat proven, police proven, hunting proven, home defense proven. Definitely a well-made shotgun and has a great track record. The Mossberg 500 has been around since 1960 and there's all kinds of different models of the 500. There's the 590, the 590A1, which is a military uh, um, pump action shotgun. There's the Persuader, the Mariner, the uh, Maverick 88, Bantam, Model 505, Special Purpose, you name it. There's all kinds of different variants of the 500. But in essence, they're all the same shotgun uh, at its core. In general, most people will say that the 870 is mostly, um, a, mostly popular with police and the 500 is mostly popular with the military. So both shotguns are, are very field tested and combat proven. This is the Remington 870. As you can see it's a very refined shotgun. Very well made. Very nice. The attention to detail is very high in this shotgun. This one here is a Wingmaster so a lot of people will consider this the Cadillac of 870's. Um, Remington has a higher number of checks that they do at the factory on the uh, Wingmasters. So uh, they will look and feel a lot nicer than most shotguns. And as you can see the bluing is gorgeous on this shotgun. This shotgun was made in 1975 and still looks brand new. Gorgeous. So some of the specs on this gun. This is an 18 inch version. Uh, this is probably the most popular length, the 18 inch uh, barrel. The length on these uh, 870's vary from model to model. There are longer and shorter barrels for sure. There's uh, short barrel shotguns for um, law enforcement and special uh, units, even some military units. But in general, um, the most popular are probably the 18 inch barrels. And then obviously there are longer barrels for hunting. And then there's rifled barrels. The 870 can come with different types of chokes. This one has a cylinder bore with no threads at the end so I don't have the option of putting a choke in here but there are some models that you can screw in different uh, size chokes so if you're a bird hunter you can uh, correctly um, size the pattern of your shot. It weighs about eight pounds depending on how it's configured of course if you don't have the extended magazine and the sling and if you have polymer parts it will probably weigh different, but in general they weigh about 8 pounds. The 870 comes in different gauges. This one is a 12 gauge, probably the most popular. But there are also 16 gauge, 20 gauge, 28 gauge, and 410. The capacity on this model is 7 in the magazine, 1 in the chamber for a total of 8. But there are other configurations. If you don't have this extended mag tube, it will generally be uh, 4 in the magazine and 1 in the chamber. And then obviously, uh, depending on where you live in the country, um, there may even be plugs in here that limit your um, capacity in the magazine for hunting and whatnot. Now something to note on the uh, Remington 870, you can unscrew this, this tube here and remove it and put a cap on here. 
or you can obviously take a cap off and make the uh, magazine tube longer or shorter. There are different size magazine extension tubes. So that's kind of a nice feature that you can do on Remingtons. You cannot do that on the uh, Mossberg 500. As you can see there, it has a screw that covers the end of that magazine tube. So once you take that screw out, all there is to see there is some threads. There's no way to extend that magazine tube. Now if you want to have a higher capacity on a, on a Mossberg, you have to go with a whole entire different model like the 590. I'll talk about that later. The receiver on an 870 is machined out of a piece of steel. And a lot of people love that. That's a big claim to fame for the uh, Remington 870 is that the receiver is steel. The Mossberg is made out of aluminum. Now, is it better than aluminum? That's uh, a personal preference. Of course, if you're a Remington guy, you're probably going to say, yes, that's better than aluminum. And if you're a Mossberg guy, you're going to say, no, it doesn't matter. Aluminum is lighter and landing gear is made out of aluminum and engine blocks are made out of aluminum. So it just goes on and on. It's a personal preference. Steel is very strong and durable and rugged. And uh, me personally, you can't go wrong either way. I like the fact that you can blue steel. As you can see, the bluing on this is gorgeous. And you can't blue aluminum. You have to anodize aluminum. The Remington has a single extractor. As you can see right there, it has one very large extractor claw, and that is machined out of steel. Very rugged and reliable and very proven. Been around for over 50 years doing its job, no problem. Now the Mossberg has two extractors and some people feel that two is better than one and they may be right but the fact that Remington's been around extracting shells for 50 years just fine with a single extractor it does its job. Haven't had a problem yet. Just something to note. Let's take a closer look at the load gate or shell carrier or shell elevator, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of different names out there that people call it. But as you can see, on an 870, it is spring-loaded. It actually pushes back on your finger when you're trying to load a round. Here's a dummy round. It's not real. And it pushes back on you. So if you, if you don't have a good grip on it, you could drop it and it pushes it right out. And you have to fumble around and get another one or do whatever you got to do to get this thing loaded and some people say that split second that you're fumbling around to to get another round can mean the difference between life and death and I, I tend to agree with them that that can be an issue for some people but if you practice you can load around no problem without any issues it's when you mess up and you accidentally drop it and it pushes it out that you have a problem now one of the things to be aware of on the 870s with the spring loaded gate if you're wearing gloves you could get your glove finger snagged in there because it pushes back and it could actually bite some of that material and get you snagged up for a split second or even a couple seconds depending on how bad your glove gets snagged in there as you can see right here see that glove got caught that's not good That's never good in a gunfight. I didn't try to do that. It just just happens. You could yank it out, but you may get snagged up for a couple seconds. That's never good. So as you can see, that could be a very bad thing. Now, in Remington's defense, uh, that's not really a gun's problem. It, it's the user's problem. You know, it's a training issue. All you got to do is make sure you either don't wear gloves or you never get your fingers caught in there. But if you're new to shotguns or if you're still learning, you know, uh, that can be an issue that you have to be aware of. The safety on an 870 is your traditional cross bolt safety like you would see on most hunting rifles. So if you have a hunting rifle, your shotgun is going to be the exact same way. There's no learning curve to learn something different. It's right there in the same spot. Push it to the left and it's off safe, ready to fire. Push it to the right, it's on safe. Now if you're left handed, that's going to suck. You're just going to have to conform to a right-hander's world. Now that's the biggest benefit of going with the Mossberg 500 because it has a tang safety. It's right there on the top. Easy to get to if you're right-handed, but if you switch to your left hand, it's also easy to get to. It's in the exact, exact same spot. Very ergonomic, very ambidextrous. Only thing is, is you got to get used to that different location. So if you're 
looking around down here for a cross bolt safety, it's not there. It's up here. So you got to train and know your know your weapon. The slide release on an 870 is forward of the trigger guard. See that button right there? Let's see it better there. See that? It's actually forward of the trigger guard. That means that you have to release your master grip. You have to actually release your grip and go forward to push that button and then rack the slide. So that is a, a negative to some people. Some people don't care. And some people think that that's actually better than the Mossberg. On a Mossberg, as you can see here, the button is behind the trigger guard, right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. See that? It's on the back side. So, you don't even see my finger move. I'm actually moving it now and touching that button. But my master grip is here. I just push that button like that, and I can rack the slide. You don't even see my finger move. So, it's actually a lot more ergonomic. Again, it already has the safety that's ergonomic. Now it has a side release that's ergonomic. And some people like that. Now, some people will say that's kind of a downside because it's too easy to hit. You're running and gunning with your shotgun and you accidentally hit that slide release button while you're running and gunning and you could possibly bring your chamber out of battery and then the gun won't fire. And you do hold the gun right here when you're running. So, that is possible. It could happen. But, again, if you train with your weapon, it's not the gun's fault. That is a training issue. That's a user problem. Now one of the downsides to the 870 is that it has a non-removable ejector. That's that part right there. You cannot remove it from an 870 yourself. If you have any issues with uh, shells not ejecting properly, you cannot fix it yourself. You can't remove it and then replace it with a new one yourself. You have to send the receiver to Remington and have the factory gunsmiths. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure how they remove it. They probably drill out the welds. You could probably see the uh, the two uh, weld spots, but um, they probably drill them out and then put a new ejector and then re-weld it back into your receiver and then re-blew everything and all that good stuff. So that kind of sucks that you have to do that. I personally prefer the uh, ejector style and design of the Mossberg 500 because all you need is a flathead screwdriver and you can replace your ejector with a brand new one at home or in the field. You don't have to mail your gun to anyone. So that is a closer look at an 870. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Mossberg 500. This is the Mossberg 500A. It is combat proven, field tested with military and police. Very reliable, very rugged, very robust, very well built shotgun. There is no denying that this shotgun is up to the task of pretty much anything that you want to do with it. Helm defense, combat, hunting birds, you name it. This gun is a good shotgun. Now some people will say the uh, Mossberg 500 feels clunky. It rattles. It's got that Mossberg rattle. It's not as refined as an 870. Lower build quality than an 870. And doesn't look quite as, as finished as a 870. And they may be right, but there is no denying that this thing is caveman simple and devastating. And definitely up to the task of whatever you want it to do. The barrel length on this 500 is 18 inches, pretty much your standard home defense um, shotgun. But there are longer barrels for bird hunting. There are shorter barrels for law enforcement and military. There's different uh, rifled barrels that you could use. In some states they don't allow you to hunt. Um, with anything but a rifled shotgun. So whatever you need, they have a configuration for you, that's for sure. In this configuration here, the plain Jane stripped down version, um, it weighs about five and a half pounds, give or take. But of course, if you start adding shell carriers and lights and lasers and different types of extensions and, and optics and rails and you name it, um, you can weigh this thing, thing down to 15 pounds easily. I wouldn't doubt. The 500 comes in all kinds of different gauges. This is a 12 gauge, like I said, probably the most popular gauge for home defense. But there's also 20 gauge and 410 bore. 
The capacity on the 500 is five in the magazine and one in the chamber in this standard configuration here, this 18-inch uh, home defense uh, configuration. If you want to have more ammo, you're going to have to buy an entire different shotgun, which is the Mossberg 590, which has seven in the magazine and one in the chamber. That is uh, the only way you can get more ammo in your shotgun. Unlike the Remington where you can unscrew this cap here and put a magazine extension on it, you cannot do that with the 500A. As you can see on the uh, Mossberg 500, you cannot add a magazine extension because it has this screw right here at the front. And there's no way to add a magazine extension. So that's a big downside for those of you who want to swap between a small shotgun versus a larger shotgun with more ammo. Now you probably could buy a conversion kit that makes this into a 590, but uh, why do that? The price is going to cost you about as much as a, a brand new 590 anyway, so you might as well just buy a, a 590 and have both shotguns. So that can be a downside for, for, the, for the Mossberg for sure. This one has a standard cylinder bore, which means there's no choke at all on this. But uh, if you're a bird hunter or whatever, turkey hunter, you can buy barrels or um, barrels that allow different types of chokes that you can put on here to tighten up those patterns. The receiver on a Mossberg 500 or all Mossberg uh, uh, 500 variants is an aluminum receiver. Now, some people will say, oh, aluminum is not as strong as steel. That's why I like Remington. You know what? I think personally that's BS because aluminum is used to make AR-15s. They're used to make engine blocks. They're used to make landing gear. Aluminum is just fine. And they've got a track record to prove that aluminum works just fine. Matter of fact, Mossberg is the only shotgun to uh, pass the military trials. So I don't think there's anything wrong with aluminum receivers, personally. That's just uh, hater BS. It is a little bit lighter than steel, which is, uh, I think, a good thing. The uh, only downside to aluminum is you can't blue it. It has to be anodized or parkerized. The Mossberg has dual extractors. Now, you can't see it because I don't have the proper lighting to see down in there. But there's an extractor here, and then on the opposite side of that bolt face is another extractor. So it has two claws grabbing the shell and ripping it out of the gun. Now, some people will say that having two is better than one which makes it more reliable and it's probably one of the reasons why it did so well in the military trials. Um, I tend to lean more towards the fact that two is better than one. Yeah, sure, I believe that and I like that. The Mossberg 500 does not have a spring-loaded shell elevator. As you can see when you move the slide forward, the shell elevator or shell carrier, whatever you want to call it, I'll call it an elevator for this uh, video, but it 100% retracts into the receiver out of the way. And what that means to you guys is you could take a round and drop it in there. You could fumble and drop it in there and it'll be very forgiving. If you're under stress, adrenaline, and fear, sweaty, bloody, muddy, whatever, and you drop your round in there, it's going to get caught in there hopefully. Unlike the Remington one, it'll hit that spring-loaded shell elevator and bounce right out as you saw earlier. So now you have the opportunity to just push it in. Again, you just find the hole slam it in there and it's going to stay there and you put it in. You could drop it and it'll go right in there and it's just easy to load. I like that. That's a big selling point to me personally. And just to show for the record you can get a glove stuck in these two. There's a shell stop right here or a shell catch and uh, your glove can get caught on that too. It's not as bad as a Remington but it can happen. Watch. Oh, it got snagged a little bit, but not bad. There it is again, see? It gets snagged, but it gets released real quick. The safety on a Mossberg is a tang safety is what they call it. And all that means is that the safety is located on the top right here where my thumb is. You see that? It's just a lever that you push forward. And there should be a red dot right there. Mine, mine actually doesn't have a red dot. It's, this is an old model. Uh, it probably fell out. But normally you push it forward and you see red, you're dead. Pull it back and it's on safe. So that's nice. And the nice thing about that is, is you can just glance down. 
you could see that your gun is ready to fire or on safe. Whereas if it was a cross bolt safety down here, you'd have to tilt your head or tilt the gun and look to see if it's on safe. Or you'd have to feel to see if it's on safe. Whereas here you can feel and look at the same time without moving anything. Your master grip is still there and you're still on target. So that's a big, big upside to the uh, Mossberg. Also, if you're right-handed, you can go left-handed. No problem, and it's right there. No reaching around for a cross bolt because it's still in the same spot whether you're right or you're left. And if you have a family member or a friend that's left-handed, they're going to love this gun because they don't have to goof around with it because it's it's right there for them. Just like for a right-hander, it's the same spot. Huge upside for lefties. Now the ejector on a Mossberg is removable by the user. See that flathead screw right there? Right there? I could take a screwdriver and back that screw out and take the uh, ejector out and replace it with a brand new one. Right here in my house or in the field. No problem. I don't have to send it to the manufacturer to have them um, take it off and weld a new one in there. That's a big selling point to the Mossberg. And you can even see the screw on the other side right there. And that actually helps um, that actually helps when you're loading a shell carrier too. Uh, they use that as part of the, the mounting surface for a shell carrier on some, some uh, models of shell carrier. So big upside right there. I love that. All right, so that's my review of the Remington 870 versus the Mossberg 500. So what do you think the final verdict is? What do you think I'm going to say? Which one's better? You know, to be honest with you, my answer is one is not better than the other. I think that the uh, Remington 870 is a better made shotgun with nicer materials, better um, uh, craftsmanship. It's more refined. It, it feels like a nicer shotgun. Everything is tighter. There's less burrs on the metal. The bluing is gorgeous. Yeah, it's a, it's a better made shotgun overall. It's, it's definitely refined. I like it. It feels like quality. But I will say this. It does have some things I don't like. I don't like the cross bolt safety. I'd rather have a tang safety. I don't like the single extractor. And I don't like the spring loaded um, shell elevator. But overall, I'm glad to own it. It's a fantastic shotgun. Same thing with the Mossberg. I think the Mossberg is awesome. I think it comes in at a good price point, which is usually about $100 less than a Remington, so that's always good. It's affordable for us uh, guys on a budget. Um, I absolutely love the dual extractors and the shell elevator that moves out of the way, so you can load it easier. And I love the tank safety. That's awesome. The things I don't like about it, parts rattle, uh, the finish is not as nice as the Remington. It's got some burrs, machining burrs here and there. And overall, it just feels like a clunkier shotgun. But does that mean it doesn't work and it doesn't do the job of defending my home and defending my life, defending my family? Absolutely not. Both shotguns are up to the task of home defense, combat, police duty, you name it. They're both proven, and I'd, I'm glad to own uh, either one of them. So whatever one you pick, just be comfortable in the features that you got. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay safe.